In this video, we'll be going more into depth on the UN calculations uh, in calculating the Bonzoff Power Index of each uh, country that we did in the previous video. So uh, these calculations really aren't that bad. So let's just go over the uh, rules of voting in the UN really fast. So uh, we said that there are five permanent members, the United States, United Kingdom, Russia, France, China, and they all needed to be in on a vote for that vote to pass. In addition to those five permanent members, you need four, at least four of the ten non-permanent members in the United Nations. So uh, that means that the smallest size that you need to win is nine players, which means the five permanent members plus four non-permanent members. So let's look at that case really fast. Well, there's nine people in on the vote. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine seats to fill. Now, what we know is that the first five seats, one, two, three, four, five, have to be filled by the five permanent nations. We have no choice there. So we can write no choice. Now, we do have a choice in these other four seats because there's a total of 10 non-permanent members, and we just need four of them here to fill these remaining four seats to get the motion to pass. So that means we need, uh, out of 10 people, we need to choose four. And how we write that mathematically? Mathematics, uh, that's written as 10 choose four. And how do we calculate that mathematically? It's going to be 10 factorial over 4 factorial, 10 minus 4 factorial, or 10 factorial over 4 factorial, 6 factorial. And we can punch that in a calculator, or you can calculate it by hand if you really want to. Um, but either way, you'll get the answer there. So now let's look at one more case. Now let's look at if we have 10 players. What does 10 players mean? Well, of course, we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 seats now. And same thing as before. The first five seats, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, have to be filled by the permanent na nations. We have no choice there. Again, we do have a choice of the last five seats. We have, again, 10 nations to choose from. And we need to choose five of them to fill these seats. So again, we could do 10 choose 5. And we would calculate it using the same uh, formula right here. So same thing with 11 seats, 12 seats, 13 seats, 14 seats, and 15 seats. So no, on 15 seats, what does 15 seats mean? That means the first five seats, again, we have no choice, are filled by the permanent nations, and the remaining 10 seats are filled by these exact 10 nations. So how many choice, how much choices do we really have for this last case? It would be 10 choose 10, which is just one, because that's just everybody. So how many winning coalitions are there? So how many nine player winning coalitions are there? We said that there's 10 choose four of those, so we would do 10 choose 4. How many 10 player winning coalitions are there? 10 choose 5. So 10 choose 5. And then we would do 10 choose 6 and so on. All the way up until 10 choose 10. And add those up. And it turns out when you add those up, you can punch them in a calculator. Uh, whatever you want to do, you get 848. So this is how I got the first number. That's how I found how many winning coalitions there are. There's 848 different winning coalitions uh, in the United Nations to get a motion to pass. So now the next thing we talk about is the uh, different nations. How many times are they critical? So we have uh, kind of separated the different nations into two categories, the permanent nations and non-permanent. So let's first talk about permanent nations. Permanent nations. If you're a permanent nation, how many times are you critical? So there's 848 winning coalitions. In how many of them are you critical? Well, in every single one, because if you leave any coalition, then being being a permanent nation, that that new uh, the new array of people in there can't aren't enough to make it to pass because you need all five permanent nations. So it turns out you would be critical in every single coalition. So you would be critical 848 times. Now, if you are a non-permanent nation, how many times are you critical? Well, the first question we should really be asking is where are you critical? So let's look at uh, the 10 player case, for example. So right here. So if you're one of these nations down here, one of these five, and if you drop out, will this motion still pass? Yeah, because let's say you're this last guy and you drop out. Now what's remaining? You have five permanent nations, four non-permanent nations, and that passes because that's how the rules work of the United Nations. And that's true for 11 player all the way to 15 player case. So looks like, let's look at nine player case instead. Now if you're this last nation and you drop out, does it pass? No, because you have these five permanent, but you only have three non-permanent, so it's not enough to get it to pass. So only in the nine player case, and if you're a non-permanent nation, will you be critical? So that's good. We kind of narrowed our focus down to just the nine player case. So if you're only critical in the nine player case, the next thing to talk about is how many times are you critical? Well, here we're just going to use a little bit of intuition plus math. So uh, how many uh, of these nine player coalitions are there? We said that there's 10 choose four, and let's get an exact number on that. So we're going to, again, it's 10 factorial over four factorial, six factorial, and that's going to be equal to 210. So it turns out that there's 210 different nine player winning coalitions. Now what do we do? Well, there's going to be four players in each of those. So how many players do we have total? It's going to be 210 times four, or 840 
different, you can think of it as 840 different spots. Now, each spot is going to be uh, a different nation. And in, intuitively, let's think about it really fast. Uh, the number of times each nation will show up in one of these spots is going to be the same for the non-permanent nations. And that's kind of intuitive because we, in our, in our minds, we're thinking these non-permanent nations are less powerful than the permanent nations. But within themselves, they are the same, they have the same power. For example, if you're non-permanent nation, if you're a non-permanent nation one versus non-permanent nation two, who's more powerful? Well, our intuition tells us that they're equally powerful because they don't have, neither of them has anything like more special going for them than the other one. So that means out of these 840 different spots, they're each going to be represented an equal number of times. So how many nations are there? There's 10. So if we do 840 divided by 10, that's 84. And what does that number mean? So let's just recap what we did. We had 840 different spots, and we divided that by 10 nations, which means each nation shows up in 84 of the different spots. And remember, each spot means a critical count. So that means that each non-permanent nation is critical 84 times. So now we have these two numbers, and now all we have to do is calculate the total number of critical counts. So how many times any nation is critical? Well, each permanent nation is critical 848 times, so 848. And how many of the permanent nations are there? Five. Each non-permanent nation is critical 84 times. How many of them are there? 10. If we do this calculation right here, 848 times 5 plus 84 times 10, we're going to get 5,080, which is the other number you might have seen in the previous video. So now the, the job is pretty much done. All we really have to do is, if you want to find the power of a permanent nation, you would do 848 divided by 5080 and you'll get 16.7%, just like we did in the previous video. And if you want to find the power of a non-permanent nation, you would do 84 divided by 5080, and you're going to get 1.65%. And let me just stress again how 1.65 times 10 is 16.5, which still isn't even equal to 16.7. So each permanent nation has over 10 times the power of each non-permanent nation. So now you know the math behind it. So that hopefully that helps a little bit in uh, future calculations.